vais vous aider, mademoiselle. Merci, monsieur. Allons, mon petit garçon. Doucement, ma petite fille. S'il vous plaît, monsieur. Anything else, mummy? Don't forget, Joss. The hotel is Les Ayers. Tell the porter he'll... He'll know where. Yes, mummy. Don't let mummy see you cry. Hotel Les Alliés. Ah bon, c'est pas loin, suivez-moi. I suppose we're walking. Ça va, j'arrive. T'aurais mis du temps pour ouvrir. Tiens, je mets des pensionnaires. Alors, qu'est-ce que t'attends pour rentrer les valises Eh ben, si tu touches pas, y a rien à foutre. Les mots mis en cas les porter. Allez, hop Ah, mais les toi-même, c'est pas mon boulot, ça le tient. I'm sorry, Hester, but I love green gauges. Good evening. Our name is Gray. We have reservations. Où est leur mère? Je suis désolée, mais l'hôtel ne reçoit pas les enfants seuls. What did you say? Something about children alone. She said no kids. No kids in hotel. I suppose they don't take children by themselves. But if we are by ourselves... Madame. Notre mère is sick. Malade. Elle est à l'hospital. Qu'est-ce que je peux y faire Je ne suis pas la patronne. Madame Corbet only manage hotel. The mademoiselle is boss. Where is she She prepare herself to go out with Monsieur Elliot. What are we going to do Vous feriez mieux d'aller à la gendarmerie. Go and see cops. Come on. There's bound to be a hotel somewhere. Hester, can you help me with the cases Bumas, can you manage the keys Yes. You can leave the baggage. Speak English. But naturally, I speak English when I wish to. Leave the bags. They will be safe. No, thank you. Ah, uh, what's all this about? Great heavens, an orphanage. We are not orphans. We have a mother and a father. And Uncle William. Our mother's in the hospital. She was bitten by... And it became... Anyway, we, we did have reservations. It's not our fault that our mother was here. It's not our fault that our mother was here. What are they doing here? Their mother wrote for reservations. You have no right to make reservations without consulting me. Those were my orders. Where is the mother? She became ill on the way. She was taken to a hospital. Anyway, we're leaving, so it really doesn't matter. Where are you going? To the police. Police? Why? Because of you French. I'm not French. Oh. Where's your father? In the Himalayas. What is he doing there? Picking flowers. Picking flowers? He's a botanist. Botanist. And he's on an expedition. <sighs> Have you no relatives? 
No one at all who could come? There's Uncle William. Shh. Mother wouldn't want him to know about it. He'd only say, I told you so. This is impossible. What are we to do? I told them they must go. But they did book their room. Accompanied by their mother. Well, it's not their fault if their mother's been taken ill. It is not mine. Oh, oh come on, Zizi. You're not as hard-hearted as all that. Look at them. <laughs> They're tired and hungry. You just can't throw them out in the streets. Please don't bother about us. Come on, children. No. No, they're staying the night. I insist. Well, all right. So you change your mind. Come this way, children. I didn't know you liked children. I don't know any. Your passports, please. That one's mine and the children are in Mother's. Next year, Mother has promised me I can have my own. I'm not interested in next year. Put them on the top floor in the rear and take their baggage. What are you waiting for? I am not nurse maid. I don't take care of kids. You needn't worry. We can look after ourselves. Oh, ça va, ça va. I take it. <laughs> when you came that first night and signed the register, you put for your address, the River Marne. It was the only address I had. <laughs> but nobody lives in a river. The Chinese do. Millions of them. So now you're Chinese? Only on my mother's side. <laughs> I've known you how long? Two months. And you tell me nothing. I've told you that at night your eyes are this color. You drink and you forget. Elliot, what is it you're trying to forget? I can't remember. Oh, no, don't joke. You are a mystery. One night you suddenly appear out of nowhere, and every week you go away. Where? I have no idea. I expect you have women up and down the river. I keep them in lobster pots. And when you go to Paris, what do you do then? Well, if I said I went to Paris on business, it would sound rather dull, wouldn't it? So? So I'll make it more romantic. Actually, I'm a sort of Robin Hood. I steal from the rich and give to the poor. What poor? Myself, most of the time. <laughs> oh, I've been poor for quite a bit. Oh, darling, please be serious. How did you happen to come here? This out-of-the-way place. I saw your chateau from the river, and it looked most inviting. So the river brought you to me. I hope it never takes you away. still up. You know I cannot sleep until you are home safe. It's ridiculous. I telephoned the hospital. The mother of the children is ill, really ill. She has a serious blood poisoning. Won't she get well? They think so, but it will take some time. What about the children? Uh, tomorrow. Oh, still up, Claudette? <laughs> Silly, I'm not ill like Mummy. Is it? At least they can't send us away today. I don't think they will anyway. Not with that good-looking man on our side. What good-looking man? The one who was friendly. He was well-dressed. He must be extremely rich. 
I didn't like the look of any of them. Go and get your breakfasts. Shall I wake Vicky? No, don't. Afterwards, would you get them to phone the hospital and see how Mummy is? All right, Joss. I'm starving. What are you going to ask for? Petit déjeuner. That's French for breakfast. For tea? That means little, doesn't it? Yes. Then just ask for déjeuner for me. Oh, Wilma. Do you suppose anyone's up? I doubt it. The French sleep late. I wonder if we can find a maid. What are you two doing down here? Joss wants us to get breakfast. Joss? Who's Joss? My sister. She's ill. I expect she's been eating too much. You don't know Joss. All right. I'll go and see how she is. Tell Morissette to get you some breakfast, then Paul can bring it up. Yes. And next time, stay in your room. Don't come down here. How's the young patient? Alive, I hope. <laughs> My word, it's stuffy in here. Oh. Yeah, that's better. Got a tummy ache? Mm. Let's take a look at you. No fever. Probably nerves. I'm quite all right. Madame Corbet rang the hospital last night. Your mother's going to be all right. She's going to get well. I want to see her. Well, so you shall. But I'm afraid she won't be allowed visitors for a few days. I hate this place. <laughs> I'm not surprised after last night. It's not too bad. Why did you come here? It's near the war cemeteries. Visiting someone's grave? No. No one in particular. And why? It's mother's idea. She thought we were becoming selfish. We ought to see and understand what other people have given up in so many wars throughout the years. Mm. Your mother seems to be rather an unusual person. Is unselfishness so unusual? If there's anything you want, just tell your sister. I'll see that you get it. A sick person is allowed to be just a little selfish. And leave those shutters open. Fresh air will do you good. Just what the doctor ordered. What's that? Enfant trouvé? I think he means strays. Psst! Mademoiselle, this is room. She sleep. But that's not her room. That's the gentleman's room. You are bats. I know Mademoiselle Zizi's room, don't you think? But we saw the gentleman come out of there this morning. Didn't we, Wilmos? He make a visit with her. Compris? He visit with her. What? So early? Oh, you're, you're ignorant, naive little baby. Ah, so, so. Yes, so. Ah, you are a Get off me! Get off me! Go, go! Let 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 go! Teach you in army camps to fight with little girls? She hit me. She hit what? Get out of here. Go to your room and stay there. All right, Zizi, I'll deal with this. I'm sorry, but I lost my temper. <laughs> That'll teach him not to tangle with the British. <laughs> Let's have a look. You better get some soap and water on those scratches. Thank you, monsieur. Not monsieur, just Elliot. Elliot. Good. Morissette, see that they get another breakfast. Oui, monsieur. Run along. Another breakfast. Just like that. 
Look at those broken dishes. Who will pay for them? I have no doubt you'll put it on the bill. How do we know they have money? I haven't seen any. I might not be able to pay for their rooms. Well, if they can't, I will. You have so much money, you can spend it on strangers. Oh, Sissy, how can you talk about money after last night? Please, miss. Smoke? Thank you. <coughs> Take little puff. Little. You learn. Oh, dear. I wonder if I ever will. Monsieur <laughs> toi. Tiens. Regarde. It's just a lorry. That's beautiful. It's mine. You own it. Soon. I save money. Then goodbye, les oeillets. Mademoiselle Zizi, lousy. Madame Corbet, lousy. Job, lousy. Why do you stay? No place else. Where are your mother and father? Disappeared. Disappeared? But parents just don't disappear. Father, soldier. American. Take pretty French girl. Give her a cigarette. Maybe. That's but not a nice word. Nice, nice, nice. For you, everything nice. For me, not nice. What about Elliot? Why did he stay here? Swilla, uh, he's a real mystery. Yes, I suppose he is. Get on with your work. Do you think your job is to play with children? And you run off and stop wasting his time. Cow. Why is she so excited? Always. When Elliot returns home, she goes nuts. Nuts? Does Mademoiselle Zizi love Elliot? <laughs> Naturellement. And does he love her? He amuse himself. Amuse himself? Oh. He make love. You'll learn soon. Like cigarette. When I in love, first time, I have 14 years of age. Aren't you finished yet? Finish! Then come in and help myself. Crazy woman, always shouting. Get on with the polishing. Oh, Armand, Monsieur, you have to tonight. I make something very special. Hi. Maurice said, I told you fresh flowers. But Madame Corbet said they were still good. Oh, she did. Well, I say they will not do. Claudette, I said fresh flowers. When I give an order, I don't want it interfered with. Because of him, the flowers are not good enough. If I let you go your own way, he will soon ruin our business. Nonsense. We had over a hundred for lunch. Yes, we are becoming only a restaurant. A restaurant and a bar. But a hotel, no. You always say we are full up. Just now, I do not wish to have strangers. You run an hotel, and you do not want strangers? Please, try to understand. I understand. This enormous place is just for him, his country house. And you pretend to be his wife. <laughs> but he will never marry you, never. How dare you say that to me? We have had nothing but unhappiness since the day. Why don't you leave me alone? What are they arguing about? You dope. Elliot, always Elliot. How can you treat me like this? Why should they quarrel about him? Madame Corbet detests Elliot. But why? You ask question all the time, question. No, Paul, why? Because Madame Corbet loves Mademoiselle Zizi. Paul! 
like mad. Oh, don't bother me with that. I can't get Miss Dawn's dress to hang evenly. Hester, Wilmos. Joyce, you're well. I'm coming down to dinner. Do we have to change? Yes. Tonight we're going to eat in the dining room. She won't let us. We'll see. Come and get ready. Elliot's coming back from Paris. What of it? What's wrong, mademoiselle? What's wrong, What's wrong, Bonsoir, mademoiselle. Bonsoir, mademoiselle. Bonsoir. Oh, thank you, Claudette. They look very nice. I'm sorry about this afternoon, but you have hurt me. It is the last thing I wish to do. Come to your senses, Zizi. Tell him to go. I cannot. You're asking me to do the impossible. We were so happy before he came. So happy. You kids look different. I know, you're clean. <laughs> we missed you very much. Honest? Really? Well done. Have you written to your mother every day? Yes. Good. Hello, darling. You are late. I was worried. How about me, a family man? Mm. You look tired. I'll make you a drink. That's what I need. Traveling in Paris is awful. Bonsoir, monsieur. Ah, Maurice. Ça va? Ça va, merci. Yeah. Oh. Been enjoying yourself? Yes. Uh -huh. I want to hear all the local gossip. Oh, well, do come and play with us. Please, well, please, please. Let me have please, one drink. Please, please. One drink. Please. Come, children. Give Elliot a little peace. Well, I'll be back later. Bonsoir, Monsieur Dufour. Bonsoir, Monsieur. Ça va? Oui, merci. Vodka. Squeeze of lemon. Ah. Especially for you. Mm. That's it. Treat the customers right, and they'll always come back. Are you satisfied? Uh, well, I've come back, haven't I? Oh. Do you think he likes her? He'd sooner be with us. Seven letters beginning with a W. Mademoiselle Zizi's hair isn't really red. They make it red in the shop. I know. You know? From the first time I saw her, it was a little black at the roots. How do you spell wicked? W-I-C-K-E-D. That's no good. Her eyelashes take off. I watched her do it. She does that with her bosoms, too. Bosoms? Do you call them bosoms? I saw them lying in a chair. Are you sure that's what they were? I've made bosoms for Miss Dawn and Dolores. Yeah, it's sumptuous, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Yes, it is. Excuse me. Oh, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, we wanted to put up for the night if you've got a room. Yes, uh, that's right, ma'am. For one night? Uh, yeah. Oh, yes, I think we can accommodate you. Michelin's got you down for one star. Yeah, that's, that's what it says, ma'am, one star. This is Mademoiselle Le Prel, the owner. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, nice little place you've got here. The chateau must be pretty old. Yes, very, very old. It has been in my family, Les Deux Prels, since 1700. <laughs> 1700. Mademoiselle Zizi's father, Boucher. A butcher? Yeah. He sell bad meat to soldiers, make big money, buy chateau. Does he mean she tells lies? And how? And here, you can see where the bullets hit the wall. Do you mean to say that's a real blood stain? Mm. My poor chateau. It has seen ten wars and four revolutions. You don't say. Blood. I saw Paul painting it on. Why does she say those things? Paul says blood makes good business. Well, Mr. Dufour, how are things with the police? All quiet. A small town like this. What can happen? Mm -hmm. What indeed? You are staying with us a long time. I like it here. You do not miss your home? I haven't one. Have a night. Oh, thank you. If you stay here permanently, I'm afraid that it is necessary to obtain an identity card. Yes, yes, I know that, yes. Come to the gendarmerie any time. I will look after you. Thank you, that's very nice of you. Come, girl. 
She is ravishing. It's only Jaws. The one who was ill. You must think we're a very unhealthy family. Not at all. As a matter of fact, I think you look good. Very good. All of you. Thank you. Mademoiselle said dinner ready in kitchen. Inform Mademoiselle we wish to eat in the dining room tonight. You heard, Ellie. I hope the children haven't been bothering you. We don't bother. Oh, well, they were very good before I went away. I can only hope they haven't changed. We never changed. Oh, ho, ho. Did you have a pleasant trip? Oh, a business trip. What is this about eating in the dining room? Bonsoir, mademoiselle. Oh. I had not understood. Understood? That any of you were so... so big. We would like to eat in the dining room tonight. I cannot have my rules interfered with. Then you'll have to make an exception, Zizi, my love. Because they're dining with me. <clears throat> she was angry. Is it all right to break rules when you're grown up? That depends, Hester. If you're going to be sorry about it afterwards, no. How do you know when you're going to be sorry? Oh, that's a difficult question. I'm not sure that I know the answer. You'll have to ask your mother. Shall we go in? Thank you very much. The children have been longing to eat in the dining room. Do a favor and see what happens. They take advantage. I let them stay here out of kindness. No, you did not. Face the truth. You took them in because he insisted. <laughs> no, it's all very well, but it's, it means something quite different in France. The four artists, what are you talking about? Joseph, now it is too. It's just an ambition. If it is your ambition, you shouldn't deny yourself. You must get Mr. Joubert to give you some lessons. He may be able to help you. I should be delighted. Miss Joss, if you could come to the office, please. You go up to bed. I'll be up in a minute. Good night. Good night. Thank you very much. Not at all. I heard what you were saying to the children. I must say your views on crime are revolutionary, Monsieur Elliot. I don't want you eating in the dining room. But why shouldn't we eat there? We are guests, like the others. My mother's paying for us. I do not wish to mix children with adults. I'm quite sure you've had other children in the dining room. Do not argue with Mademoiselle. Do as she says. I'm sorry, but my mother wouldn't like it. Since your mother is not here, you are in our charge. Monsieur Elliot has been looking after us. Shall we ask him what he thinks? Monsieur Elliot shall be informed. Well, I have decided. You may have dinner with the guests. But I forbid you, absolutely forbid you, to trouble Monsieur Elliot. Do you understand? Now you be a good girl and go straight to sleep. What did she want? Well, not to trouble Elliot. She wants him to herself. You see, you wouldn't believe me when I told you what was going on between them. All the more reason not to get mixed up in it. Well, I'm going to see him whether she wants me to or not. It's different for you. You're just a child. I'm only three years younger than you. You wouldn't understand. Anyway, he's taking us to see Mother. Well, I suppose there's no harm in going to the hospital with him. I like him. A lot. Stay in the car, you two. Be good. It'll be your turn next time. Give our love to Mummy. Right. Won't be long. Butty or Built in 1304 by Philip the Fair in honor of his queen. Mother's in a hospital built for a queen. Probably no different from English hospitals. Show me an English hospital that was once a monastery and built by a king. Well? These are for your mother. Elliot, thank you. They're her favorite. Bonjour, madame. Ah. Que désirez-vous, monsieur? Voici les filles de madame Gray, ma soeur, qui sont venues voir le maire. Suivez-moi, je vous prie. Ah oui, merci.
Comment va, Madame Gray? Elle est encore très faible, mais elle va beaucoup mieux. Sister says your mother's much better. Oh, good. Did you ever hear of an English hospital serving wine to the patients? The sister says you can only stay a few moments. Hello, Mummy. You're feeling better? Oh, yes, thank you, darling. A lot better. Hello, Hester. You're all right. How the little? They're fine. They send their love. Elliot says they can come next time. Been so worried about you. Now you're not to worry, Mrs. Gray. Mummy, this is Elliot. How do you do? Thank you for bringing them. Their letters are full of you. Oh, I've done nothing. Now, you mustn't be a trouble to Mr. Elliot. They're no trouble, I assure you. You're very kind. Uh, this is their uncle's address, in case you should need it. Thank you. I'm sure that won't be necessary. I'm sorry, darlings. Hope I haven't spoiled your holiday. Of course Mama, not, Mummy. Silly. It's all right, Mrs. Gray. I'll take care of them. Right. Your mother wanted you to see a battlefield. Well, that's one. It doesn't look like a battlefield. Fifteen years can heal a lot of scars. The German position was on top of that hill, and we were advancing up the valley from Soissons. We? You were there, Elliot? Yeah. You were a soldier? I was a lot of things. Jew of Joss. Does it taste of salt? No. Sugar and spice. Standing there for a very long time. Why is she black? You often see them like that in France. The first sacred statues were carved from Bogog, which is black. I read that in a guidebook. Would she be as old as that? Yes, yeah, she's very, very old. And she's supposed to be able to work miracles. I can believe that. Her cloak is beautiful. Are those real rubies in her crown? Yes, they are real. Rubies and amethysts. I want to see the rubies. I lift you up. I wish I had a crown like that. Come on, we'll go and see the rose window. What's the matter, Hester? When you looked at Jaws, I was jealous. Were well, you now? But it's wrong to be jealous. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I think I feel rather flattered. Jaws? Look at those ladies standing on the wall. They're saints. They're 700 years old. Just says they're 700 years old. That's quite right. This facade was built in the second quarter of the 13th century. Elliot! Don't do that! I'm sorry, Hester. If it's broken, I'll buy you another one. But why didn't you want to have your picture taken? Oh, it's just a silly superstition, that's all. You? Superstitious, Elliot? Well, of course, everybody's a bit superstitious now and again. Actually, it's an old Tartar myth that's been handed down in our family. We believe that every time you have your picture taken, a little bit is chipped off yourself. But you're not a Tartar. Anyway, they didn't have cameras in those days. Of course I'm a Tartar. My ancestor's the great Genghis Khan. And he had everything, including a camera. <laughs> the cameras weren't invented until the 19th century. Oh, Will Mouse. Come on, let's get down the river. I've got one or two things to do. Elliot, what do you do? 
Well, let's see now. Oh, all sorts of things. I know how we can find out. Count his buttons. Yes! 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 Tinker, tailor, soldier, sailor, rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief! 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 Who'd have thought it? Come along, you tykes. Haven't got all day. Off to the river. Just to the guards and face like a pig. <laughs> Bonjour, Monsieur Elliot. Bonjour, Claude. We've been put on, n'est-ce pas? Oui. Ah, oui. There's a cafe along the towpath called La Grenouille. Pop along there and wait for me. Are we going to eat there? Why, are you hungry? Right. Yes, sir. Go on, then off you go. I won't be long. Elliot, we're thirsty. All right, but soft drinks only. <laughs> Perfect. I wish we never had to go back to Bexel on Sea. I shall live in France when I grow up. So will I. Or perhaps India or Baghdad. Is Elliot a sailor? How could he be? He doesn't dress like one. But what's he doing on a barge? He probably ships things down the river. Anyway, it's none of our business and I wouldn't keep asking him. I like Elliot. Who doesn't, silly? He's the only one besides Mother who doesn't laugh at me because I make clothes. Do you mind, Wilmers? Of course I mind. Elliot is a good man, isn't he, Joss? He's good to us. This is the first time I've eaten in a restaurant. We had dinner out with Uncle William once. That doesn't count. It was a tea room. Here comes Elliot. Ah, let's play down. No one talk. Oh, not that silly game. Oh, Joss, don't spoil it. <laughs> well, if you've finished your cocktails, we'll have some dinner. Have you decided what you want to eat? Mm -hmm. Ah. How about this table, Monsieur? Oh, splendid, Monsieur Prideau, but it seems that I'm the only one with an appetite this evening. Ah, then what will you eat, Monsieur? Well, I think I'd like to start with one of those delicious, plump little melons. You know? <laughs> nice and juicy. Uh, nice and juicy. Well, when you bite into them, oh. And what to follow? How's the steak? Oh, ça, le beefsteak, sensationnel, sensationnel. Good, I'll settle for that then. Make mine not too well done. Et avec le... Oh, fried potatoes. Les pommes allumées. Crisp and golden. And some petit pois à la française. And what about some strawberries? Are they fresh? I picked them myself this morning. Strawberries it is then, and a pot of your wonderful fresh cream. But of course. Bring the wine. I want dinner, Elliot. One. Two to one. Two. And me. Three. Me too. Four. Be seated. Can we have what you ordered? The melon and everything? Uh, Monsieur Prido, it seems that four young people have suddenly rediscovered their appetites. Can you extend that order? Certainly, Monsieur. Ah, you're lucky. <laughs> On Christmas, we had a taste of sherry. Hmm. All right, I can take a hint. Pass your glasses. Not all at once, you audible, audible children. As a matter of fact, a little wine's a good thing. It loosens rusty tongues. It was my fault, Elliot. I thought it up. No water for me, Elliot. I'm not a child. I know. It's these clothes. They're young, aren't they? I rather like them. Couldn't possibly. I'll tell you a secret. It'll make you happy. I like everything about you. We want a dinner! We want a dinner! Oh, we right, want oh, dinner. right. Keep it quiet. I tell you what. Let's play a game. You pretend you're all dumb and all of a sudden... <laughs> Why did you not telephone? Don't wake the child. Can't we have a drink together? Sure. I'll be back in a moment. See you at the bar. Night, mademoiselle. Good night. Mm. Night, mademoiselle. Never had such a night in my life. He is interested in that young girl, and there is nothing you can do about it. And now he has found an excuse to go to her room. She's just a child. Is she? Or does he see in her you when you were young? Leave me alone. I hate you. Good 
We'll be hearing from Vicky in about 17 hours. Elliot, I don't want this day to end. Monsieur Elliot, coffee up. Right, thanks. Put it down. What are you doing in that case? Nothing, monsieur. It was open. It was shut and you opened it. No, monsieur. Don't lie to me. Get out. Please, monsieur, it is the first time. I... And it'll be the last. Please, uh, don't... Go on, get out of here. Please. Morning, monsieur Joubert. I just started sketching. That's very good. Joss? Joss? They're going to sack Paul. What about Paul? Well, Elliot caught him going through his things, and he told Madame Z and Madame C they'd have to get rid of him. Madame C refused, but Elliot insisted. It was quite a row. I heard the whole thing. Yes, but Hester... If Paul gets the sack, he'll lose his summer bonus, and he won't get his lorry. Well, what can we do? You could ask Elliot to give him another chance. Just please, please. Why should I? It's not our affair. It seems such a shame. But anyway, I don't suppose Elliot would change his mind, even if you asked him. Well, wouldn't he? He refused his darling Zizzy, so I suppose he'd refuse you. It's all you know. Why are you smiling? Oh, nothing. You're putting on lipstick. Just a little. Where is Elliot? I saw him go out to the orchard. Don't you worry about Paul. drop from that tree. Maybe you're a nymph and live up there. A green gauge nymph. In that case, I should grant you a wish, when it's the other way around. Would you do me a favor? What can a mere mortal do for a nymph? Don't let them send Paul away. You too? He has no home and no money, and his heart is set on that lorry. Why are you so concerned? He's been good to Hester and the Littles. <laughs> I've never known a family like yours. All sort of glued together. You must have had one too. I had a mother and father. They weren't around much when I was small. Then when I grew up, I wasn't around much myself. That sounds so lonely. Oh, I suppose it does. I'm rather used to it now. Do you like this place, Elliot? It's as good as any other. Well, anyway, you have someone here. I mean, not exactly a family, but I mean... Look, 
You tell me about your life and that funny little place you come from. What's it called? Bexelancy. <laughs> Bexelancy, that's it. Well, I do what everyone else does. Go to school and afterwards we mostly play hockey. Hockey's all very well in its way. But it really isn't living, is it, Elliot? I wouldn't know. You know, I feel as if I've never really lived till I came here. No? I can't tell you all that's happened to me. I mean, inside of myself. Yesterday. And you know, at first I didn't even like you. Why not? The day I was ill, you came to see me. You treated me like a child. You're not exactly an old lady, you know. I'm 16 and a half. A half? In another year and a half, I'll be 18. At 18, a girl is quite grown up. In some places, she can even vote. What will you vote for, Joss? For life. Does that sound silly? No. You have my vote, too. I don't want to miss a thing. I want to travel. I want to paint. Most of all, I want to live. To feel. The way I felt last night. Re-engage, Nymph. Your wish is granted. My wish? Oh, my wish. Thank you. On one condition, that you come out with me. We'll go to the Champagne Caves. I'll go until the others. No, not today. Just you and I alone. Go to the car. I'll fix it up about Paul and meet you there. Now listen, you tags. I'll take you some other time, any other time, but definitely not today. Please, Elliot, we won't be in the way. We promise. But we're going to the Champagne Caves. That's no place for children. But I must. I need to know about Champagne. So must I. So must I. We'll have to walk a long way through the dark. What are you going to do about Vicky? I like the dark. You won't like this place. How do you know? <sighs> mm. One thing about the British. They certainly stick together. Oh, oh, thank you. Oh, oh, it's going to be oh, in What's he doing that for? Each bottle gets a twist every day. Why? Well, that brings the sediment down to the cork. Now, this is an art. They don't seem to talk much. No, they like to keep rather quiet down here. Even a current of air can disturb the wine. Can we see some more? Yes, there's plenty more to see. Come on, off we go. Long here. How far do the cellars go? Believe it or not, about 10 miles. But you mustn't call them cellars. They call them caves in France. 1947. What does that mean? That's the year the wine was bottled. I was born in 1947. Then you're the same vintage. Where's mine, Elliot? Well, let's see now. Ah, what's this over here? Here we are, Chateau Vicky, 1952. Does it really say that? <laughs> well, maybe I've changed it just a bit. Where's yours, Elliot? Oh, I'm afraid the caves don't go back that far. Here's mine, Chateau Joss, 1945. 1945. Ah, that was a great year. One of the best they ever had. For champagne? For everything. And the war ended. Where were you? In Germany. I was in something called the Special Services. Sounds nice. <sighs> nice word for a spy. A spy? Did you disguise yourself and pretend you were somebody else? I think I'll be a spy when I grow up. You'd have to learn how to lie, to steal, even how to kill. No. You stick to fashions, Will Mars. There's less wear and tear. My favorite music, Champagne Corps. Come on, Vicky. Coming. Combien avez-vous monté depuis ce matin? 500 bouteilles, monsieur. Eh bien, c'est bien. 
Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour. You have been through the caves? Yes, indeed. May I say you have a fine family? Eh? Uh, oh, yes, well, actually, they give me quite a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps you would care to take a glass of champagne with me, monsieur. Champagne for us, too. Oh, would you like that? Yes, yes please. please. Can I taste a little? Just a little? Come with me. Right. You want to be careful of champagne, you know. You get bubbles in the nose. <laughs> <laughs> it will go fine. I've never tasted champagne before, I guess. Well, it's always the first time. Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour. Who are they? Another party for you? This is a fishing club. Each year we give them a lunch. It has many famous members. Such as? Doctors, lawyers, even a bishop. <laughs> well, they like champagne. This year, the guest of honor is what in your country you'd call a Sherlock Holmes, one of the greatest detectives in France, Monsieur Renard. Renard? That means a fox, doesn't it? Yes, indeed. There he is now, talking to those two priests. Monsieur le Director, you'll forgive me. Uh, it's rather late. I have an appointment in Rennes. Just one glass, oh, please. Oh, 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 take a minute. Another time. Encore. Mille fois. Merci. Come along, children. But I've never champagne. tasted champagne. Thank you, monsieur. It's a pleasure. You don't have to carry me. Bonjour, monsieur. Monsieur Renard, très heureux de vous connaître. I wanted to fill the bubbles in my nose. Comme ça, vous ne me croyez pas, monsieur Je suis avec lui. This is the road back to Vieux-Moutier. Yes. You said you had an appointment in Reims. I know. Do you tell lies, Elliot? Yes. I'm sorry I had to do that. Then why did you? Oh, I had a reason. You wouldn't understand. You didn't tell the truth. I understand that. All right, I tell lies. Well, so do you. So do all of you. For you to tell them is different. Hester means... I know what she means. It's all right for you to tell them, but I must be perfect. You're grown up. You think when you're grown up, you'll always tell the truth? Haven't any of you ever tasted champagne before? Don't be silly, Elliot. How could we? Today was the first time we ever saw it. It isn't as exciting as all that, once you get used to it. I suppose that sounds silly, too. Elliot, what's made you so unhappy? Being perfectly happy for two days. Good evening, Monsieur Joubert. Sorry, Monsieur. Good evening. What are those glasses for, Joss? I don't know. Champagne. It must Hato. be for us. Champagne. Lucky ones, you're having a party. It is it's for us. It bubbles. It bubbles. Let's drink to Elliot. Yes, to Elliot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you have some. Thank you. Could I offer a little bit to Monsieur Joubert? Certainly. Ask him. Say, uh, vous prendrez bien un verre, Monsieur Joubert? Vous prendrez bien un verre, Monsieur oui, Joubert. Oui, c'est ça. Vous prendrez... Vous prendrez bien un verre, Monsieur? Avec plaisir, mademoiselle. Well done. À votre santé. À votre santé. santé. Good health, good health. Ah, Monsieur, you must wet the cork and touch it behind mademoiselle's ear. <laughs> ah, silly of me, I forgot. <laughs> Voila. Was that lucky, Elliot? Rather. Oh, do it to all of us, Elliot. Oh, do it to all of us. Do it to all of us. All right, you asked for it. <laughs> <laughs> Elliot. Claudette says you ordered her champagne for the children. Well, I had a reason for it. Are you mad? I know your reason. Oh, there's no need to make a scene about it, Dizzy. It's nothing. You call it nothing? You can't be in there, mademoiselle? À ta santé. Sissy, really. Joss? Leave me alone. Oh, come on. Grow up. Don't be such a baby. Is it? Is it? 
Dizzy, I want to talk to you. Go away. I don't see you. Come on, open this door. I do not apologize. I'm not asking you to apologize. You take her part. I'm not taking anybody's part. The whole thing's ridiculous. Stupid. She's only a child. Hmm. Come on, darling. Be sensible. Two days I've hardly seen you. You go out with her and I'm left here. Surely you're not jealous of a little girl. First she was a big girl, big enough to have dinners with grown-ups. Then she's a little girl. Charming. Oh, see, they're only children. Children. You think I'm an idiot? To you they are not children, not her anyway. I've seen you looking at her. Not so loud. Oh, you're afraid someone might hear. She might hear. I don't care. I want her to hear. It's time she found out about you. Sissy, I warn you. You pretend to take care of her. You pretend to be her father. What you really want is to take her off somewhere and make love to her. Maybe you have already. So, I came close, hmm? Look what I've given up for you. The hotel is my living. You say no guests, no guests. So that thinks I've gone mad. Oh, Elliot, all this must stop. Send for that uncle to come and get them. I don't want you and them in this house. Susie, we need those children. We? All right, I need them. Because of us? Exactly. Oh, you imagine our affair is a secret? Oh, no. I believe it has to do with your business in Paris. You can believe what you like. I think that the police might be interested. Dizzy, is that a threat? Don't try and blackmail me. Don't try, that's all. Oh, I know you could kill me. You're capable of it. I have no pride. I'm only a woman who loves you. It's all that is left of me. We've even kept our passports. Passports? Why do you want them? I want to go home. One can't travel without them. What about us? You got along without me when I was ill. But it's more interesting now. You call it interesting. Oh, Joss, don't spoil everything. I know it's difficult, but we're alive. Just think how alive we are. It isn't like home where everything went on and on and nothing ever happened. Hey, Miss, see what I found? Champagne cork. You must keep it. Very lucky. Thank you. You do not want? Doesn't seem very lucky. There's some um, champagne left. You want it? I don't. Why not let that chick cat get it? He means Marisette. Well, what could we do with it? <laughs> we could drink it. Again. Drink it? Sister. Well. You know, Joss, Paul isn't really so bad when you get to know him. Soon, you feel better. Sante. Sante? Good health. I don't drink to that. I drink to the devil with all the cockroaches. The devil and the cockroaches. The cockroaches. I always thought you had to drink to something nice. People at Les Oye, not nice. Paul's right, they're not nice. Pretty quick, huh? Another bottle? Well, the wine's locked up. Madame Corbet has the key. Not now. I go for more. 
the pool, should you? Go on, go on. You're angry. What of it? I'm afraid when you're angry. I'm afraid of what you'll do. And when they find out... They that can't we... do anything to us. Any more than they've already done. But Paul will get into trouble. Oh, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> what? It sounds so funny when you say it. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Monsieur and Bouchon, same thing, huh? Monsieur and Bouchon. Put a sock in it. Put a sock in it. Tonight you grow up a little. No. Come on, just a little. No. Come on. Oh. Blonde de blonde. <laughs> I'm beginning to feel a little blanchety blanc all over. Oh. Hey, you cook on gas. Fill it, fill it, fill it, fill it. <laughs> not anymore, please. Shut up. Shut up. Merci, un bouchon. Put a sock in it. I wish they could see us at school now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Paul. Huh? It was sweet of you to get me this wine. <laughs> You just don't. You think you mean it. <laughs> what if he does? He gives cigarettes to Hester. Why not to me? Okay. I'll have a cigarette. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on. I like you. <laughs> just don't. Why not? You'll hurt him. I'm going to hurt him. You're getting drunk. I want to get drunk. <laughs> I'm going to do all the disgusting things they do. <laughs> <laughs> no more blankety black. Open the other bottle. <laughs> no. Yes. Boozy rouge. <laughs> boozy. Boozy rouge. Do you hear that, Esther? Boozy. <laughs> boozy. Blankety, 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 blankety,
I've just had an experience. I was down at the river and I saw that barge. The same one we saw with Elliot, the Murray France. What of it? Well, Elliot came along and saw me standing there. At first he was sort of angry. Why? He thought I'd been following him, but I hadn't. Anyway, it turned out all right. We all had spending money again. You mean from Elliot? Yes. Here's your share, Hester. What about those snaps I asked you to pick up? They're in the envelope, too. Joss, these are yours. I don't want anything from him, and I never want to see him again. What'll I do with it? Throw them in the river for all I care. No fear. I know. I'll get some new patterns. Oh, here's the one I took of Elliot at the cathedral. I didn't think it would come out. We had such a wonderful time that day. Why do things have to change? Because people change. Hester, you know, I think there's something wrong about Elliot. Why didn't he want his picture taken? And that day we were at the Champagne Caves. Why did he lie about the appointment? He just wanted to leave, that's all. Yes, but why so quickly? You know what? I don't think he wanted that police inspector to see him. What was his name? Renard. Remember? The fox. Renard. That's it. Hester, we've been friends with a man who isn't honest. I don't believe Elliot could be bad. Look at the way he behaved last night. You know, I could almost feel sorry for Mademoiselle Zizi, being in love with a man like that. He hurts everybody. Oh, I don't know. My head feels terrible. I'm going back to bed. Hester, give me that snap. But you just said you didn't like him. I don't. I hate him. Oh, Joss. I don't want to talk about last night. I should think not. I would like a 25 franc stamp, please. You can put it on our bill. Thank you. Forget what happened, shall we? And start all over again. You don't want to? You may feel like that now, but it won't last. I'm just off to Paris. I'll be back tomorrow. I thought perhaps you and I could... I'll be busy tomorrow. I'm very, very sorry about last night. Why do you keep doing things you're sorry about afterwards? I wish I knew the answer to that one, too. Party. It's not for children. And you are to stay upstairs. Understand? But Elliot said... Elliot is in Paris. I will have your dinner sent up to your rooms. Yes, mademoiselle. Be sure to tell your sister. Yes, mademoiselle. If you have finished, let me do it now. Oh, what a lovely cake. It's the biggest cake I ever saw. I am an artist, I do but French, I see like Monsieur Choubert's with paint. Come on, then, translate this. Audacio vol de bijou. The most daring robbery carried out in broad daylight on the Rue de la Paix. Rue what de la Paix. What are those funny old men on the top for? They are musicians. It is for the instrument maker's ball tonight. 
The bandit, armed with a revolver, made his escape in an open car with jewels worth 10 million francs. Oh, smart hmm? fellow. We're not allowed at the party. Would you save us some cake, Mr. The Al? manner of if the aggression, no, 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 no. the I pattern am. of the hold-up leads the police to believe that it is again the work of Alan, a bandit of international importance. Mm -hmm. It tastes wonderful, Mr. Who, Armand. Who is behind the something jewels. The jewel raids at Cannes last year. Inspector Renard says... Inspector who? Inspector Renard says I have seen him but once only and this time we shall get him. The line isn't bad, but the perspective... I need to learn to draw. I'm going to art school soon. When? After the holidays. For artists, there are no holidays. Oh. And also, artists do not get mixed up with other things. But there are other things. But not for you. At least not yet. ran away from him at Pomery. But what makes you think it could be Elliot? He was in Paris yesterday when the robbery happened. So were lots of people. Millions, in fact. Why should it be Elliot? He didn't want the inspector to see him. I don't believe it. I don't believe Elliot could ever do anything as bad as that. Do you really think so? Promise. Joss, I'm so relieved. <laughs> Speak in English. Now listen carefully. I'm ready to leave. Yes, tonight. Now this is what you must do. Charles, are you sure we ought? Why not? Suppose they don't let you stay. They will. I can make people do what I like. You mean men, don't you? Bonsoir, Monsieur le Directeur. I am not so very little, am I? It makes no difference. You're beautiful. I must introduce you to the man. Come with me. She looks like a lady. She's only flirting. I don't like her doing that. Why are they kissing her hand? The French are fond of that. to stay in her room. Well, you had no right to do that. First was Paul, and now look at her. Oh, come on, Zizi. Forget her.
She is just trying to be grown up. A woman of the world. Find excuses for her always. You want her, don't you? I knew it from the beginning. <laughs> Come on, boy, back to work. Come on, Crouch, build me. Come on. Crouch, dance me, dance me. They don't want me to. Come on, she like me. She not. Come on, do it. Come on, do it. Come Go where I scream. No scream. Paul, go now and I won't say anything. I won't tell anyone. Joss. 
try to forget what's happened. Call an ambulance or a doctor. No. It's too late. He's dead. The drain pipe broke. He did it himself. It's terrible. It's horrible. Joss, you must go back to bed. We must call the police. No, I don't want the police here. But the... No, please. You must understand that. I can't have the police. Don't ask any questions. They're coming. Huh? I send that snapshot to Inspector Renner. What snapshot? The one that Hester took that day outside the cathedral. You sent that snapshot. Oh, Joss. Why? In heaven's name, why? I was jealous. When you left me, it went to her. Everything was spoiled. Everything. But I loved you so. When did you send it? Yesterday. When the inspector comes, you know nothing, do you understand? You know nothing about what happened tonight at all. After you went to bed, you never saw me, you never saw Paul. Nothing, you must promise me this. But they'll find him. Not until I'm out of France. They'll be searching the roads and everything. Not the one I'm taking. Now go back to bed, quietly. Don't disturb anyone. I'll never see you again. Who knows? I'll never love anyone else. Ooh. You say that now. Little Joss, this summer you grew up. You became a woman. Then kiss me. That way. Je te dirai après, mais en route le plus vite possible. of you took the photograph? I did. I took the picture. And you are? Hester. Hester. Age 13. And Roselle, you've succeeded in doing what no one else has ever done. Getting a photograph of Alan. He isn't Alan. He's Elliot. He's had many names, Matit. Now I must ask you for the negative. I won't give it to you. But you sent the picture. You were trying to help. I sent it, Inspector. Oh. You at least wish to bring this man to justice? No. Then why did you send it? For personal reasons. I'd give anything on earth not to have sent it. A fine friend you are. After all he did for you. Mademoiselle, please. But Elliot is our friend. 
Your friend is a thief. A thief who stole in many countries. No, he was a soldier. He said he was a soldier. Oh, yes. He was. With a good record and a good family. It's all here. Then a scandal, a woman, of course. The army punished him severely, discharged him dishonorably. He never went home. That is when all his crimes began, first little ones, and then always bigger, until he's now a formidable criminal. Your visitor's here, and we welcome you. But now you can help us by answering my questions carefully. When did you last see this man? I told you, they saw him at the ball, which is the last any of us saw of him. Mademoiselle, I must ask you not to answer questions unless they are directed to you. When did you last see him? Speak up. We'd rather not talk to you. I suppose you knew that Alan, Elliot, was a murderer as well as a thief. Would you still like him? Yes. You would defend a murderer? He isn't a murderer. He killed the boy Paul? No, he wouldn't do such a thing. You have no proof. No one saw him commit the murder or throw the body in the river. But Madame Courbet will testify there were bad feelings between them. She told you that. You see, when a murder is committed where no one has actually seen the crime, but where the circumstances point to a man who's already a felon, the presumption of guilt is usually strong enough for the state to execute him. He didn't kill Paul. How do you know? I was there. I saw it all. But you what were did there. you see? He fell. He was pushed, wasn't he? No. His neck was broken. You just don't fall and break your neck. It was an accident. He fell off the drain pipe. The drain pipe? The one he used to come to my room. What did I say? This person you call a child. You see what she was up to? With Paul. And how many others? To lie. The way you all lie around here. What about the night you were drunk together? Do you deny that? And last night at the ball, when you and Paul made a scene on the dance floor? I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it any more than I could help his coming to my room. No, you can't help anything. But everywhere you are, things happen. Bad things. It has been that way in my house ever since you came. Everything bad was here, right from the first night. I didn't know there was so much evil. We didn't bring any was here, all of you. Look at it. Mr. Check on that drain pipe. See if there are any marks under the girl's window. Mademoiselle, you're a woman of experience. By protecting this man, you're open to suspicion of collusion, of being an accessory. Surely you have no illusions about Alan. I have no illusions, no. But I love him. Before. I'm sorry, monsieur, but this evening the hotel is closed to guests. But I'm not a guest. My name is Bullock. I'm a solicitor. Uncle William! How did you get here? Uncle William! Uncle William! All right. One at a time. Everything's going to be all right. Hello, Josh. Hello, Uncle William. Monsieur Bullock, this mm -hmm. is Mademoiselle de Presse, Madame Corbet, and Inspector Renard. How do you do? How do you do? Monsieur, there's been some trouble. Yes, I know. That's why I'm here. You know? Yes. How did you know, if I may ask? Oh, the telegram. What telegram? I thought you knew about it. Come immediately, Hotel Les Oyers, Vieux Moutier. Your sister in hospital, children urgently, repeat urgently, need your help. Who sent it? It's not signed. Elliot sent it, of course. Elliot? He always looked after us, didn't he, Joss? Yes. Always. Please, monsieur, give it to me. He's wanted by the police. Don't give it to him. Mademoiselle, please. It was sent from Chalon at eight this morning. He was heading for the German border. Mm. Chalon. Chalon is very near here. Not 70 kilometers away. He's had at least seven hours. I don't understand. Could he be walking? With the road watched, hardly. Chalon. That's on the Marne, isn't it? The Marne. The Marne! The Four, the river, the one road we forgot. 
Search all barges between Chalon and the border. This time we've got him. <laughs> Madame Corbet, I want to telephone quickly. He was our friend, Uncle William. He was our friend. Yes, he proved that by sending the telegram. You'll forget all about this when you're back in England. No, we'll never forget. Never. <laughs> 